Welcome to VBlog51. This is Business 135. Business fun with Excel and math. Hey, this is Chapter 10. We're going to talk about annuities. What is annuity? An annuity. There are two possibilities for an annuity. You either pay an equal amount of money each period, like when you save for your retirement plan, right? You put away $200 each month. Well, we would like to know if we save $200 each month, how much we would have when we retire. So that's one example of an annuity when we pay an equal amount of money each period. The other example for annuity would be receiving an equal amount of cash each period. Retirement plan example again. Now, on the day you retire, you have $500,000. The question is, how much can you reti um, uh, withdraw each month to live on? Hey, uh, receive an equal amount of cash each period. So each month, you would like to know how much, if I have this much on the day I retire, how much can I withdraw each month if I'm going to live for 40 years? Now, let's define an annuity. There's two concepts that always apply. All cash flow payments are equal in amount, right? No matter if here you're receiving from your retirement plan some amount each month or on a car payment loan you're paying um, the same amount each month or in our retirement example here you're paying exactly $200. So payment is exactly the same each time and the time between each payment is equal. So you can't have a month and then two months, forget it. The, all the math we do won't work. There's a way to do it, it's just a lot more complicated. Time between each payment is equal and there are lots of examples of annuities and we will look at a few of them. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, one more so here's the defi definition of an annuity, and there are two types. Um, most all of them are called ordinary. All annuities are ordinary unless otherwise stated in this textbook. That's when the period payment is made at the end of each period. So if you're saving for retirement, you make it at the end of each month, or the end of each two-week period, or the end of each quarter. Okay? Annuity due, um, period payment is made at the beginning of each period, and this is rare. It doesn't happen often. It happens in uh, leases that it's common there so if you're saving for retirement usually you do it at the end of each month but if you do it the day you start the plan you put in some amount then that would be an annuity due because pe the period payments is made at the beginning of each period so if you start off at the beginning then that would be that we're going to have one example of this again that's rare almost all annuities are ordinary and it will say in the problem um, Monthly payment made at the end of each period. Quarterly payment made at the end of each period. If it says made at the beginning, ding, 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 then you know it's annuity due and there's a slightly different formula. Hey, let's look at some examples here. And these examples that we're going to look at, um, uh, we'll do all of, we'll calculate all of them. So here's our first example. This is two possibilities. This is the pay and equal amount. So we have four examples for pay. They're common. We're always paying something to somebody. Hey, a retirement plan example. If you save $200 at the end of each month for the next 35 years and you can earn 12% compounded monthly, how much will you have when you retire? This is an example of a future value of an annuity. The annuity part is the $200 at the end of each month. The future value is, hey, if we put away this much money, how much will we have when we retire? And in this example, we're going to make the calculation where we solve for the future value. That means how much do we have when we retire. Next example, example retirement plan again. But here, if you need, if you need want, that should just be if you want to be a millionaire in 35 years. So great, I want to be a millionaire in 35 years. And you can earn 12% compounded monthly. How much do you need to deposit at the end of each month? So the this is another example of future value of an annuity. The annuity, though, is the how much do you need to deposit at the end of each month, but we don't know that. The future value is the millionaire. I'd love to be a millionaire when I retire. So that's the future value. But here, we're going to ca make calculations where we solve for the payment. Here's another example, savings plan. This is the same as our retirement plan, except for in business. If a business needs, here's an example, if a business needs 100000 uh, dollars in 10 years and can earn 10% compounded quarterly. How much do you need to deposit at the end of each month? Very common. You need to save up to buy some big asset and you need to know how much. This is an example of a future value of an annuity. 
the future value is this amount that we need in 10 years. The annuity part is uh, deposited at the end of each month. Ooh. That's not correct. When we do that one, I think I fixed it here. I didn't fix it here. That should be, um, in fact, I did. I remember fixing it. I just didn't fix it here. So what I want you to do is cross that out right there. It's the, it deposited at the end of each quarter. Now, this problem right here would be possible, but it would be a very complicated mathematical uh, calculation in, in a finance class I teach here. Uh, we would do that calculation. But here, you want to cross out each month and put each quarter. So at the end of each quarter, yeah, you have to make sure that if we have an, uh, the rate here quarterly, we would have payments quarterly also. But here, we're saving up to buy this piece of equipment in 10 years. This is an example of a future value of an annuity. The um, annuity part is the deposit at the end of each quarter. And the future value is this is the amount we need in the future. And in this example, we will be calculating and solving for the payment. This is also an example of a sinking fund. Sinking fund is sec, uh, chapter 10.3. And sinking funds is a fancy way to say, I'm saving up to buy something. And that's what businesses call it. Also, when big corporations have a lot of debt, they in their contract it says, you need to be saving up to pay us off. And they're called sinking funds. But all it is, is you're saving up to have some amount in the future. Example four, how much can we afford for the new car? If you can afford to pay 250 bucks at the end of each month, hey, that sounds like an annuity right there. We're paying 250 at the end of each month for the next five years at 6% compounded monthly. How much do you have today to spend on an automobile purchase? Wow, this is exciting. This is exactly a situation that you might be in. You know you can afford amount, but you don't know what you amount you can uh, spend for the new autom or used automobile. This is an example of a present value of an annuity. The annuity part is the 250 bucks at the end of the month. The present value is because these are in the future, so we need to make a present value calculation zoop, to find out how much we could actually have today. And this would be a loan. So we would have our loan payment of 250 bucks. But the present value, zoop, the amount of the automobile price today. And in this example, we would be solving for the present value. Hey, our last example here, retirement plan before we go on to calculating. A retirement plan. If you have $500,000 when you retire and you plan to live for 40 years and you can earn 8% comment a monthly, how much can you withdraw each month from your account? Now, that's useful. And you need to know this because you don't want to just go out and spend, you know, $250,000 in the first month on a bunch of fancy cars and clothes and stuff because then you won't have it if you're going to live for many years. You won't have enough money. So this is a great example. This is an example of a present value of an annuity. Now, the present value, when you're sitting, standing there at retirement, you have the $500,000 in your hand ready to put back into the bank and, and then withdraw from it. So the, on the present value is the amount that you have in your hand right now. The annuity part is how much you can withdraw each month from your account. All right, again, to find annuity, cash flow payments are equal in amount. Time between each payment is equal. Ordinary is almost everything we're going to do. That's payment made at the end and then annuity due, per, uh, period payment made at the beginning of each period. Now, we're going to look at our future value math formulas. If you scroll down in your PDF, here's all the variables defined. And then there are our lovely formulas. So this is for our retirement plan. Find out how much we'll have when we retire. We're putting in this amount each month. There's our annual rate, our number of compounding periods, all of that right there. X is years, years. And then that pops out once we do this calculation, we get our future value. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this once in the PDF. Um, these PDFs have drawings for all of these, how to do the longhand. Uh, no one does the longhand anywhere in the real world for the calculations like this. 
they and by the way, the textbook is going to teach you with tables. Those things don't exist in the real world anymore, at least extremely rarely. There is no way people have had financial calculators and spreadsheets to make these are extremely common. There's thousands of calculations like this made every day and people either use a financial calculator or Excel. I'm going to show you the future value function. It is unbelievably easier than this. Um, and here's our next one. Um, this is when you have a retirement plan. How much should we deposit each period? And again, we're solving for the PMT. There's our future value. That's our millionaire, right? How if we want to be a millionaire and then we do all our calculation, it tells us how much we have to put in the bank. So I'll show you that one. Uh, actually, I'll show you this one once and then you can look through the PDFs for how to do all this delicious by hand math. Or we can either use the future value function for future value and the PMT when we're finding out how much we need to put in the bank to become a millionaire. Let's look at our first example here. If you can save $200 at the end of each month <coughs> for the next 35 years and you can earn 12% compounded monthly, how much will you have when you retire? Now, let's see, $200 at the end of each month. So that sounds like the definition of an annuity, equal amount, end of each month. Oh, and it's ordinary. Next 35 years, that seems like years, so we're going to say, we'll put our variables down there. You can earn 12% count on a monthly, how much will you have when you retire? Well, it sounds like retire, that's in the future, right? So we're solving for future value. We don't know what that is. Our PMT, that's our variable. If you look up here, <coughs> it defines all these variables. By the way, I use the, all of these variables here. These are kind of variables you would find in Excel and on any financial calculator. Um, so PMT, that's our m monthly payment. We're going to deposit 200 bucks at the end of each month. Years 35, interest rate annual 12%. Monthly, number of compounding periods, that's going to be monthly, so it's 12 periods per year. Future value, we don't know. Period rate, there it is, number of total periods, n times x, uh, number of periods per year times years. Now, here's our formula. Future value equals PMT times 1 plus the annual interest rate divided by n. We've seen that before. Raised to, and then in parentheses, n times x. That's the number of compounding periods times years. And then, this is notice, that's a division bar there, and then it's minus 1. So it looks like there's a parentheses there. Looks like there's a bracket here. That bracket is also a parentheses. Not only that, but when you write things by hand in math formulas, this division bar is also a parentheses. So guess what? We have to do everything up here first, then do everything here, then do the division. Once we get that, then we're allowed to multiply whatever the single number is here times our PMT. So we just copy our formula from up above, type it, write it here. We've listed all the variables, so now we just plug them in. 200 for the payment, there's our annual 8.12, number of compounding periods, raised to the num number of compounding periods per year times years, minus 1, and then divided by 0.12 for 12%, divided by 12. So, looks like we have to calculate this inside of the parentheses. So here's a parentheses, here's a parentheses, here's a, a division bar, here's a parentheses, here's a parentheses. So, let's start in here, we can do that. Uh, 0.12 divided by 12 is 0 0.01, plus 1 is 1.01. And then in this parentheses, 12 times 35 is 420, so we write that there. We just bring this back down here. We can do this one because we already did it there. We know it's 0 0.01, so we write that there. Now, we still have a bunch of stuff to do up here first. An order of operation says, of course, we have to do our exponents first. So we do 101 uh, raised to the 420, and we get... 65.309.5947145688. So obviously you're not going to round when you do that. So you subtract 1. You got that there. You subtract 1 and you get, um, that shouldn't be all the way right there. That's just 200 because we still got to do this division. 200. Uh, and that, sh that line shouldn't be there. But 200 times and then this division. 64.3. 0, 9, 5, 9, and I ran out of room to have all those decimals, either in your calculator or in Excel, of course. If you don't round it, they're all there. Uh, divided by 0 0.1, we get um, this number right here. Actually, you could just slide the decimal here. But you get 6,430.959471456867. Multiply that by this 200. We get this uh, number here, but we have to round to the penny. 
So we get 12,860, uh, no, 1,000,000? Wait a second. You mean we're going to have a million dollars? That's amazing. 1,286,191.89. So if you can save $200 per month for the next 35 years and earn 12% combat a monthly, you will have 1,286,191.89 when you retire. Now, just to give you a little finance lesson here, the most powerful variable in all this is years. If you start in your 20s and put just, even you can start with a little amount when you're 20s, um, and just every 10 years or so raise the amount, you will have a million dollars when you retire. It's just that simple. And we have a great calculation coming up in Excel where we'll see how little we actually put in because 200 times uh, the 420 is not that much money to get a million bucks. So that's how to do it by hand. Let's go over to Excel and see how to do it here. Um, our objectives for this chapter are simple. We're going to do uh, future value annuities and present value annuities. That's it. That's everything in this chapter. I'm going to show you some, some or we looked at some math, but um, uh, mostly we're going to do all the Excel functions. So we're going to make uh, future value annuities where we solve for future value and then future value annuities where we solve for payment, right? how much we have to put in the bank each month to become a millionaire. And then present value is where we solve for present value. And um, then present value of annuities where we solve for the payment. And then the last section is sinking funds, and that's just a savings plan from up here uh, solving for the PMT in a future value annuity. How much do we have to put away each month to buy a piece of equipment in the future? Or how much do we have to put away each month to pay off debt in the future? Let's look at our first example, future value one. If you can save $200 at the end of each month for the next 35 years and you can earn 12% compounded monthly, how much will you have when you retire? Okay, we already looked at this one. Let's just put our $200. That is the payment. We have all of our variables here. You just put the variables in where they go. 200 bucks for the payment. Uh, next 35 years, so that's years. Put that there, 35. 12% uh, annual, so that's our annual rate. Uh, annual rate right there, 12%. Monthly compounding monthly, so that means 12 compounding periods per year. And we have to calculate our period rate. So that's going to be equals, oh yeah, 12% divided by our 12. Enter. And then total number of periods is going to be compounding periods per year times our years. Now, um, in the PDFs, it shows you the math for how to distinguish between uh, or all everything we've seen is ordinary there's in one of the uh, by hand drawings I did I showed you the formula for annuity due but you don't really do that because in Excel if it's an ordinary duty annuity you put zero in the function otherwise if it's annuity due you put one so we're going to put a zero here now we're going to come down here and we're going to see how to do this. This is quite easy. We are solving. I put question marks there for the future value. Now, let's go ahead and we can see here um, how to do insert function and search for a function. I think we already did both future value and present value in the last chapter. Yes, we did. But let's just remind ourselves. Future value or retirement value or something like that. We'll get it. Uh, we read through all these different ones and we can see if it fits FE, returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. Hey, that sounds like us. Let's go ahead and double click this. And it, um, this one time we'll do the, uh, the, argu the functions argument dialog box so we can read the, the uh, descriptions here. Notice the uh, title bar up here, the, uh, you can click and move it. Now rate, let's read this. Rate is the interest rate per period, for example, you six. So we know for period, we've already calculated that. It is our little i divided by n. So we're going to take that 1%, it looks like. Tab gets you forward. NPER, as we saw last chapter, that's total number of periods. So that's our 420. PMT, 
do we have PMT? This is what we didn't do last chapter that we're going to do this chapter. Let's go ahead and read this. Payment is the, is the payment made each period. It cannot change over the life of investment. Hey, that's exactly an annuity. So let's click over here. But before we do, we have to put a minus here. This is cash coming out of our pocket, and these financial functions need, some, need a minus somewhere. Now, the present value, we don't have any, but the type. We want to do type. And you can, it reminds you here, type is the value represented the timing of the payment. Payment made at the beginning of the period equals 1. That's rare. Payment at the end of the period is 0 or omitted. You don't have to put it here, but we are just so that uh, it, when we get to the annuity due, we we are already practiced in putting something here. So we're going to put our zero there. And look at that. There it's already given us our example. Our example, there's the unformatted result, and there's the formatted result. Click OK. That is a lot easier, and you can see up here, it's a lot easier than doing that a math formula. And in the real world, again, this is what you do. Um, now, one key is when we skip an argument because we didn't have a present value right there. If you click up in this formula bar right here, you can see that it's waiting for it. it. We don't have any present value right now. There's nothing. If we started out with some amount, like we initially put 2000 bucks in or 5000 we could put it there, and it, we'd have even more money when we retire. But we don't. The key is if you're going to use an argument and sk later on and you're skipping one, you've got to put the comma there but leave it blank. And you can see right here it shows you that in the example and over here too. Uh, and then state in words. If you can save $200 at the end of each month or the next 35 years and you get a 12% compound a month, you will have a million two hundred eighty-six thousand nine one hundred ninety-one dollars and eighty-nine cents when you retire. What are you going to do with all that money? Keep it in the bank and then uh, withdraw just what you need each month. All right, uh, we'll see you next vlog. We're going to do a bunch of exciting future value and then we're going to do some present value ones.